morning. Yeah, they turned on the AC, so now it's time for us to bring jacket, carry our jackets in the 100 degree outside weather so we can be warm in here. Or maybe I should just see if I'll buy a pile of blankets that we can just keep in here. Like an encampment. They turned on the air conditioner this weekend, which is uh, a little weird because I'm doing an oil painting and like, they're pretty, feel too strong the oil painting, but I. I'm going to be marching Okay, let's see how everybody's doing. Marvin. Hello, Professor Casey. Uh, this is Marvin Cowles. Um, I'm, I'm trying, trying to get, to get like, like all the edges rounded. The substance so painter, like after uh, uh, I exported, exported this, this and, and imp imported it into a uh, substance painter, painter. Um, uh, I uh, did, did not, not get the resource that I wanted. wanted. Because, um, like, the edges kind of, I mean, the low poly mesh and high poly mesh kind of overlap with each other. And it looks like this in Substance Painter. I am uh, not sure how to fix that. Like, for instance, you can see it right here. You, you can tell that um, the low poly mesh and high poly mesh is existing together. So, so, like, I do I not get, get the rounded edges, edges here, here that I, that that I want. want. So, so if, if I just go here, uh, you can you see, see that, that the, the, the high poly mesh is, is in, in here, here, you know, like, I, it's basically fit into, into the low poly mesh. mesh. So, so um, I can, I can try, try dialing this up, but I doubt it will solve my issue. You know, there's like a limit to how high I can crank these presets up. Um, but um, let's try and see. Bake it. Let's bake it. Turn. So, see, is I mean, the edges kind of, I mean, on the other spots on the object, uh, yeah, you can start to see some kind of diminishing returns, you know, after picking that up so high. But yeah, as you can see, like, it does not solve the issue. Yeah, so that's because there's two much of a difference in space between the high poly and low poly. So we ran into this with that, with uh, Fabio's part, right? So the, there's fewer controlling edges here in the high poly. So the rounding of the subdivision surface is more aggressive there. If you got, if you're going to use a piece that's rounding using subdivision surface rather than bevel, right? bevel would have less of an issue with this because it doesn't move the position of the points quite as far. Right? So if I have this 
And if this were my low poly, and then this were my high poly, this would not work at all for that baking technique because the actual location of the points for the two of them is radically different here. So the let's make an example here of how we could do this, some sort of cutout that would work. Basically, when you're using a subdivision surface to create the high poly, you need to make sure that the you may need to add more controlling add more controlling edges to um, maintain the shape. So for instance, in this one, if we hit uh, C on this, and this becomes low poly, and then I just duplicate it, or CV, this will become the high poly eventually. And so here, turning this off, so we can just look at the high poly one, right? So in order to get this, we want rounded edges, but it needs to much more closely represent the actual shape. So I'm going to create some controlling edges um, around the edges of the cube. Got them all now. Right, so now the difference between the low and the high poly is much less. There's much, much less difference of a shape. It's just that the high poly one has the rounded edges, whereas the low poly one does not. Let's put some sort of cut here that would be um, an example of what we need to do. So you had that kind of uneven cut. I'll do something like that. So here, here, here. I'm just trying to recreate what you had there. OK, something like that. And then you had two points that were kind of like this. And hit T, bring them in, you know, some sort of extrusion like that. And then. Here, um, you created an inset, kind of like this, right? And if we just extrude, you know, it really rounds it out because there's virtually no controlling edges in this scenario. So a better technique here might be to inner extrude just a touch to create a controlling edge. Then extrude and extrude again and then inner extrude. Now that creates um, pretty good sharpness along the you know sort of inset profile, but uh, along the edges here it does not. So we would need to. sharpen that up some. So I'm in KL, loop cut mode. So I'm going to go here and there. I should have done this in the low poly first. But now I've sharpened this up. Like so let's say that the I'll do it this way. Let's uh C V I Hey. 
There it is. So in the low poly here, let's put that surface in there. There we go. There's the low poly version of that. And so now, you know, for something, depending on how deep it was, you know, may not need to be represented in the low poly, but if it was this deep compared to the overall scale of the object, yes, it would need geometry there for that. And now I will control C, control V this. This will become the high. We'll dump that in there. And we will create some controlling edges. So this I'm just in loop cut mode here right remember I'm adding loop cuts to the high poly model here so it doesn't matter too much if we're cutting a whole bunch right because uh, we're just using this to bake onto the low, right? In here, this is really rounded here. That's not going to play well with how sharp the low was, right? So it's, re it's really just about the edge rounding there. And even here, let's see, I'm going to turn this one back on. Even that strikes me as maybe too much. You can only push this technique so far. And so let's go ahead and put one there. And then we may need to add another loop cut. How's it going? For me? Yeah. Okay, can you come by like when we're done eleven thirty? Or is that okay. is that good? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now I suppose the simplest way to say what I'm saying is the shapes between the low and high need to be more the same. Yours was too different, right? When the high one is super rounded, it, that this baking technique doesn't really work. Um, so now they are similar, right? Here's low, low, and here is high. And so now if I were to uh, control drag or connect objects on this, this is now high poly, Question, this is low poly question. We will export this as an FBX. All good. Where is it going? Pay attention to where it's going. Data drive, there we go. And low poly question, export this. Data drive, good. And now back here. And so you, what you need to do on yours is add some more controlling edges there. Now, even if they're not perfect loop cuts, depending on how the geometry worked out, again, not super critical because, um, you know, as long as it's not causing some weird distortion with the sub D surface, you just need some more definition of the shape. So let's make a new one. Select low poly question. What did I do wrong? I didn't unwrap the low poly one. 
UV edit. Especially because it's a cube, all six sides are on top of each other. So we definitely need to do that. So control A, reset. Let's remap that. Now we'll export it. Great. Now back here. Not back here. This is Marvin's question. Back here. Here's our low poly mesh. Great. Let's go into our mesh map bacon. I'm in I'm on the school computer, so I, I'm seeing the older interface here. And let's drag in or just find our high poly. Remember, we don't need to unwrap the high poly. We confirmed that previously. Boom. Pretty good results. Um, because there wasn't that much of a difference between the two. So you can't just add controlling edges with the, you, you need to add them with the inset and the extrude, but you also need to add them with the loop cut so that the actual profile of the extrusion is in, is in the sub, represented by the subdivision surface. So yeah, the low poly, low poly, high poly workflow just needs to be more similar in your case. And it did work pretty well on all the other parts because there was very little difference between the two. It's just that one extrusion you had there on the end. You need to make some more cuts to make sure that that shape is much more representative of what it looked like in the low poly, right? Because it's getting just kind of mushed by the high poly. Um, So for low poly is like this, right? There we go, something like that. The, when you dump this in there, you see how rounded everything becomes. So one way to make it less rounded is the, you know, the extrude and inner extrude cuts. So here, and then at the bottom of it, wherever that is, here. That's only rounding around the edge there. Um, not the, the the inset part of it. And so KL, loop cut, we need to cut along here in order to round out along the actual profile of what's going on there. Here, 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 here. 
now that much more closely represents what's going on with the other shape. Cool. All right. I'm sure everybody needed to hear that again as far as what's going on with the, the shapes there. Now, again, it doesn't have to be subdivision surface. You could create the high poly mesh using a bevel workflow. It just, um, yeah, the other way, what am I doing? There we go. Right, in this case, that, you know, maybe a quicker uh, means to an end with the, uh, well, let's see, if I back it out to, here, right? And so if I just did this in this case, the bevel workflow may be a quicker means to an end if it were something this simple. Um, you would definitely want to make sure that you turn on the long break rounding if you're using that. Or I think this object would play well with the clean bevel, which I think I have on the computer. All right, I need to install that. Um, and you could use this as your as your high poly mesh, because it's got rounded corners. And yeah, because it's the bevel workflow, the, you know, we're not in the world of controlling edges. So, you know, if I were doing this shape, this is clearly a faster route to getting, getting something that's going to work. But that's not the case with every shape. Uh, like I said, we have our two different techniques, either subdivision surface or beveling. Fabio. Hello, everyone. This is Fabio Brzezzi here. Um, I'm having a little bit of trouble. I don't know it's... Um, I looked on the mesh, even on the low poly mesh. It, it, I have this... Um, um, looks like it's a bad mesh have a little bit of this here then when you when you use something to paint you can see like you have a little bit of deformation here um, I already optimized the, the mesh at cinema 4d a couple of times I, um, um, I UV unwrapped it also and uh, a um, couple of times as well, and then it still showing on my mesh here at the uh, Substance 3D paint, Painter. Um, I don't know what to do, um, what can be causing it. Um, that's it. This is my question for this week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Yeah, that's in the bake not in the geometry so something in the bake settings there we need some more tolerance so that that isn't quite as we don't get that error in the baking let's see did you upload the files or not let's see if we can use the ones that we have here so if i go back to here
So I'm not getting the exact same error, but I'm getting some errors, some, you know, these are artifacts from the baking. You can see that we get this over here. And let's turn a few things up. So our high poly, low poly here, uh, in the new one, I think we see a representation of this. Um, these are going to look at more of the rounding area in our curvature settings. Um, these are going to, you know, cast more rays to try and get a better um, understanding of what's going on with the surface curvature, right? So if we were to look at just the curvature map right now, which we can do by coming up here to curvature, we get that. It's kind of blocky. We come back to here. and back to our thing. Let's rebake with way more curvature resolution. And be sure that we are turning on the anti-aliasing on the bake. And let's do it again. A little bit better. Let's look at the curvature map at least. Now, not nearly as blocky, right? Sort of smoother, smooth that out. The other thing we can do, we're still getting this seam here because I believe that's where the UV seam is. Let's confirm that. So let's try one more time. Let's go to Bake Mesh Maps. And we'll turn up the dilation width. Oh, also. What did I set the resolution to? Okay, yeah, 2048. Our other edges look good. That edge is not so good. Let's look inside. This looks way better inside. Since the curvature map looks way better, that doesn't strike me as something strange. We could just be seeing something weird in here. Let's make sure that we have this viewport anti-aliasing on. Yeah.
does strike me as weird that we're getting that line in a place where there's no UV seen. Like, that is continuous there. Yeah, I'm not sure. So it's, sol it's solving some of the problems, certainly by increasing our bake settings. But we do get these occasionally strange things. Um, the thing which I think would I have an inclination that making the low poly, because this is super extreme, right? Our low poly has absolutely no extra geometry on it. Um, if we were to give it a little bit more geometry at the edges, let's see how that would work. So I used a bevel here just to create you know, super simple bevel and make sure that my angle was up and I'll make sure that on the bevel I have that selected. So let's export this one and see if we get any better results. So not super, super low poly, just much less low poly. Um, OK. Question two. Rebake. I think I have a UV map problem there. I don't think it should be that bad out of the box. Let's see.
bring that one in. So I'm just replacing the low poly by going to project configuration and then saying, yeah, take this one that is more properly UV unwrapped. There we go. And let's make sure it still has the yeah high poly there. That's all good. See, which map is this showing up in? Something weird with the normal map. At this point, I feel like I'm too far in. I may have slid too many sliders. So let's just start clean here. So low poly question three. Okay, so that fixed that horrible problem over there because something had gone too far. Let's go back to baked mesh maps now. And let's try to adjust the corners here by making sure our curvature is good and also making sure that we've got our anti-aliasing on. Those two things, try to mentally keep track of what's changing. That's better. Cool. And then over here, So that's gone. Let's look here. Was it our dilation width that was doing that? If I dial this way up and do it again. No, that still looks good. Now, apply diffusion. Still looks good. Our distance, if these are up, yeah. So this is. In that new version, you saw when Marvin was dialing it in. It shows you kind of what's going on there. Uh, this is Fabio's question. Where's Marvin's question? That was that yellow like padding that showed up around. Yeah, there it is. Right, so 
it's kind of like extending it out in each direction as he's changing this. But if you extend it out too far, it like runs over itself or it runs over other parts of the mesh, which is what happened here. This part of the mesh is smaller, like it's a smaller detail. And so it's sort of like interfering with itself in the space on the distance. If I turn these distances down and rebake, it should get rid of that normal problem that was right there. I think the little bit of this that we're getting right here, this is from our Fong break in Cinema 4D. So I turned off use edge breaks and Try it one more time. Import this one. And rebake. Dilate is doing this. So there's a good visualization of this on the. So um, the stuff in between UV islands is theoretically just not in the system, right? Like th those pixels are pixels that are just frankly go unused, right? They don't get ever rendered onto a mesh. However, um, when it's running certain processes, I'm, I'm not entirely certain. It does happen where these um, having just gray in between the islands doesn't work out because of the way it's interpolating something, something, something. And so the dilation here is doing what it shows here in this GIF, right? It's sort of like spreading out the color so that it fills in the space in between the islands so that if for some reason those pixels are showing up um, at the edges or at the seams, it um, makes that uh, more forgiving, working under more circumstances. So that's what's dilating in that. Um, OK, this looks better, especially we're not getting those lines uh, here anymore. And we're not getting that weird line there. So two things I would check this um, on the very top window. These might be dialed up too high for you. And it's using something else in there. Something's running over something else. And that's causing that, that shading error there. Also, making sure you have uh, this on. And then going back and checking out the Fong shading in Cinema 4D because that may be that there may be something that may just be just below whatever this angle threshold is and that would be causing that to look that way. Fabio, if you got a chance, send that file so we can look at that file next week. Right, because I was able I can't reproduce the whole thing right now, but like that would that would do it. Cool. All right, we got closer there, I thought. Uh, so um, painting was a little frustrating this week since um, every time I tried to paint um, with this tool, for example, or this one right here, which tool? Basically, if I paint this one right here, Basically, if I paint with um, an A area, sometimes it will paint on the other side of the object, and I don't know this until I'm almost done, and it's pretty frustrating to deal with. 
That's all. Thanks. Celeste, what tool? I couldn't see which one. We can't see your mouse for some reason. That's weird. I, I mean, maybe that's an OBS setting you can turn off or something. But are you talking about the polygon tool? She's on the stream there. So two things. One would be to make the selections in UV mode or just on the UV map. So this doesn't project through, whereas over here it does, like so. Also clicking rather than dragging doesn't go through the whole thing. UV chunk should not do that at all. Yeah, so I never click and drag on UV chunk, I guess. I just click. Because if, yeah, if you click and drag, it's getting the chunk and then the chunk behind it. But when I use UV chunk, I guess I'm always over here, just selecting the chunks, like so. And then that you know, only applies to those chunks. But on polygon, again, if you click and drag over here, it's not going to select through. But over here, If I just click, 
I just get that face. And that is not going through, I believe. Let me go back to where that's gone. There we go. So if I just click, 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 that's good. But is there a way to turn that off so that it only does that? see here. Yeah, not that I'm seeing. I mean, this is kind of like why we went into that <coughs> UV chunk preferred workflow. But we can get by it if we're just clicking once rather than click and drag. That goes through. But the better idea here is to just have UV chunks that we can just select them in the UV map. That is irritating. There's got to be a way around it, but I just don't know. Um, it's weird that that would be the behavior, the default behavior, when you click and drag like that. But don't click and drag, or just use the UV chunks. I'll look around some more. There's nothing obvious. If we had some other, you know, if you had something that was much more complex, you could sort of mask out just that chunk of it so it would just work there um, but you know for instance let's say you're gonna paint a whole bunch on this face although this doesn't happen if we're in paint mode right yeah we're just painting on the surface there because that doesn't project through So that would be fine. Yeah, so UV chunks. Or just click. Don't click and drag. I'll drill down further, but yeah, that seems like, you know, it's just not, for whatever reason, when you click and drag that box, and there's no way to make it not the box that I can see. Yeah, I'll look around some more, but that seems to be our only options as of right now. Yeah, I thought you guys are adding to the folder. Right? People's stuff is in the folder. I gave everybody um, editor access to the folder. So yeah, 
we can use that folder. That's just on my school Google Drive. So you should be able to upload stuff. Someone, someone test that real quick. See if you can dump something into the folder. You should, everybody, I think I gave everybody access with your school email to that folder. So you should be able to add something to that folder. So you've got, okay, this is the low poly. And those are not inset in the low poly. Like these lines here. And so you would want to inset them in the high poly mesh. Or just select that part in in the low poly mesh, since it would just be in the in the normal map. Nothing comes to mind. I mean, that kind of feature, like you, the quickest solution to me would be just just to paint that feature in Painter, right? So. For instance, if I wanted that kind of striping on this, uh, you know, I'd add a new fill layer just on a little height for now, and um, and then draw those. Um, those features. Right, so I have that, um, and then I could come in and you know adjust that to be whichever way I would want it at that point. And you're in the texture at this point, so you wouldn't need to worry about that. I mean, and so I'm doing that by drawing in the mask. And so then, if I wanted that to be a different you know material, you know, I could just use this as a mask on a folder or whatever, um, like we did before. So and now it has its own color. It could be more metallic or something, right? And so now I can come in with this and make that kind of a feature here. Now I'm holding down Shift to make sure I lock it so I get you know this perfectly straight line. And then Shift, click. A Shift plus Control. Control locks it to what is this, like 15 degree increments or something like that? And so that allows you to you know, draw So this is not changing geometry, right? This is just, mm -mm. just adjusting like in the height? Yeah. So if you wanted to I add an emissions count to that instead of color, but keeping the height. You can do that even if it's not geometry. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you would just, uh, first of all, add your emission channel. So, channels, emissive. Now we have an emissive channel. I'm going to turn off the metal and the color. Let's just give it emission and turn that up. Uh, but we need to do something with our shader. Don't we? Oh yeah, here, emissive. There we go. Uh, it doesn't look very glowy. You can make it look glowy if you go into your display settings and turn on some. Yeah, because it would look glowy when you send it back. The glow is going to be a function of where the final render is coming out, right? But you can get a preview of it looking glowy here with. Um, post and glare is glare going to do it yeah, I thought we had a like a straight up glow uh, glow yeah that, that kind of does it there's some presets here for the glow Bloom. There we go. All right, and so now let's go ahead and put the uh, height for this. We'll like inset it so like that. I mean, this is so glowy now that I can't really tell. Turn that down. Yeah, so that would be the, the quicker answer there with that. Uh, and again, holding down shift when I'm orbiting around locks me into that view, right? And now I can grab this, make sure I'm in the mask. And I'm just in the basic hard brush, you know, turning down the size. And then, you know, shift clicking and then shift clicking makes a line, but then holding down control locks me to those angles, you know, so I can do That kind of thing. So, what about the inner wall? It's going to be hard to draw here. I'm drawing it on the UV map instead. Drawing on the bottom wall, it's not crazy difficult. And there's a particle brush that, go, that does a kind of effect like this, right? So here's this selection. If I come down here to one of these, they have a preset that does 
a similar kind of thing. I forget what it's called. Yeah, so the particle brushes will actually, you know, like it's spawning particles onto the surface and then drawing into the to the texture. Uh, there's one that I thought looked more techno-y. Is it called techno? I totally forget now. These are just regular brushes. The broken glass one, I believe, is a particle brush. Yeah. Uh, this fracture, is this a particle brush? Yeah, OK, so there you go. Um, that spreads across the surface. Again, I'm painting it into the mask. That went over, it's just going to go around the whole thing. Um, right, so that fractures the whole thing. It looks a little low res because we're at 2048 or whatever. If I were to go back and undo that, let's look at the settings here for this. Um, so, where's all of our particle stuff? Yeah, physics. Okay, so spawn speed, particle life, particle speed. I'm going to say, let's get rid of that stuff. I'm going to say restore to defaults. So the size, I mean, the, the biggest thing you'd want to art direct here is like not having it spread out over the entire model. Particle life, I think, is going to be the primary one for that. Let's see here. Yeah, so now it's like this, you know, just kind of noisy line. But if you were to turn up the how long they actually spawn for, then you would be able to draw a line. 
and it becomes like a fracture like that. Um, so a balance between how long they live and how fast they go, right? Because even if they don't live that long, if they went much, much faster, they would also spread out more. Right. But this is a little bit different than other particle systems. They have it divided into an emitter and a receiver. So the emitter options, what are we on right now? We're on single rain, kind of drop stuff onto the surface. But I don't think every emitter is going to quite work with every receiver. It may just have to be some trial and error there. Let's go emitter. Let's go with rain and burn. Yeah, so there. What is, how do, what's the receiver? The Q? The, the, so this is all, you know, you have to make sure you have a physics brush selected. Mm -hmm. Then you get this tab here. And then, yeah, under physics, there's the emitter. And then there's the receiver here. And so if you click on that button, it shows you the different emitters. That's the one we're using before was just single. Now we're using the rain. Here's the spray. Spray just, you know, kind of like a random spray on there. And rain was the OK, it's doing it in that direction. No matter where I click, it's doing it from the top because it's supposed to be like rain falling down onto the object, which I, I think they have set to default. You know. Isn't that like a triclinic projection as opposed to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this particle sim is running in like 3D space, not, not, um, not 2D space. Like, I mean, like the projection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 doing it in space. I mean, we're kind of getting stuff stretched out over here because that's we'd have to change the angle at which the rain is happening or something. Rain, yeah. Gra oh, you can change your gravity direction here. So gravity direction, yeah. Like so, it's zero x, all y, a little bit of z. So if we turned up the x so that it was raining from the side, let's see if that works. direction positive x is now. It's getting a little hard to tell what's going on, so I'm going to clear the mask. There we go. Okay. And so now if I were to run this. Yeah, now it is coming from we're getting some on the side here. Whereas if I were to clear the mask again and turn the x back to zero, where it's just y, now We get kind of even on the other sides, but just mostly on the top. Right, so something like this, you know, probably don't want it to be like in the height or emission channel. It can just be like in the roughness. Right, and so now. Maybe a little bit in the color channel. There you go. Right, because I'm, I'm painting into the mask, right? So that allows me to go in and. So we can get all this like pitted. If I turned on the height. Yes. And yeah, like just wow. chilled okay. that out, just just a little bit. Wow. What brush was that? Yeah, so I mean, I started off with the fracture, but uh, but yeah, so I could, uh, where do you go to do that? You could save this. 
Well, I mean, there's a separate rain. You could probably use that as your starting point. So, yeah, rain. Here. It's kind of weird that they go up from the surface, but, you know, that's the, the way it looks. Um, I mean, there's a fault. It's always a fault. Not that you need it, but it, there's you go together way. Oh, we wanted to like drip down the sides. Um, and that well, he has another brush for that. I meant I meant to have it like you could see it coming down. It, it is odd that it goes up. Yeah. So the um, has a dripping. That's a generator. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of a generator. The, the dripping. Uh, yeah. 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 So if we want to set the drip. If I just take a basic hard brush, how do I opt into that? Do I need to? Uh, yeah, OK, cool. So if you just search for part, all the particle ones come up here. So that, that helps narrow it down. I've never opened them. I've seen them. So now, yeah, like splat, I think, drips down onto the surface. Everything on the UV, you could get it right to the top edge. Uh, yeah. Or is it just that, does the brush have a delay? Yeah, yeah, it's not, it, it's, it is a little slow. Hmm. Yeah, I'm holding down shift, so I line it up just right. And if we wanted it to streak further, that would be turning up physics spawn rate, spawn speed, spawn spread. Let's leave that where it is. We want to receiver. This is the leak receiver. Um, yeah, so the emitter is kind of like making the particles, and then the receiver is like, what do they do after they're born? Um, and so. Gravity, yeah, I think is what's pulling them down here. And so, yeah, because we don't have a speed. Uh, if I turn the gravity factor up, and see if that pulls them down more. Right, so if I wanted streaking rust here, you know, um, so there's some rust. Mask this rust, rust, uh, then come in here. And paint this rust on there. Rust and, into the mask. Yeah, into the mask. <laughs> I feel like it had some more noise, fade, friction, wind. Particle life randomness spread. Turbulence. Turbulence power, turbulence scale. Let's turn the turbulence power up. Mm -hmm. 
Bush, you can change glow. Yeah, so the. Uh, we didn't want it. This does seem to come through quite a bit. Uh, that's going to be the. Okay, why do we just have flow jitter and not flow? It is also. Let's turn flow jitter up. If I want it more noisy, you know, the turbulence, it's definitely doing more turbulence, but the turbulence is still pretty big. So if I turn that down and that up, we get more. I don't know why. You gotta be. I guess uh, maybe it only shoots the particles so far or something. I don't think like you can. If you do something in the height channel and then put the layers and multiply it and you can get some of the you know, breaking up. The rust layer breaking up if you have a height and a multiply. I don't know. I'm thinking Photoshop. I'm thinking too much Photoshop. To make the rust sit in more, you mean? Yeah, yeah. The, well, make the rust sink in, but then you also see some of the blue paint left over, or whatever the cube color. Yeah, is. so the rust height. Uh, yeah, so this is a preset material, so there may not be. We'd want to adjust that, so probably a levels on the height. Yeah, I see it's all kind of one spot. And yeah, depending on how close we were to this, like this clearly needs some more pixels. I feel like they space out a lot. Anyways, you can get all to all the particle brushes for in brush, then it's like part. So burn is gonna go in the opposite direction. Yeah, so if we wanted to make that look like we're scorching this thing, you know, instead of having being rust there or some other Yeah, so instead of just, you know, it gives you something to burn in there on top. You want it darker, come over here and add a levels to the 
color channel. Yeah. Maybe there's some height info here on this. And it's super rough. Cool. All right, so let me pull up backpacks. You had you had a question about your wire rig, right? T, Jose, how are you guys? What, where are you at with stuff? You're painting. Any problems? T, how about you? Okay. Yeah, this is just I I I can't get any of them to work. There, there's one I didn't do anything with yet, but they're at the top of the file. Oh no, I I, cr I set up a I made a new file with just the wire bundles. So there's too much other stuff going on. I know you'll see it, whatever it is right away, but I keep changing the orientation of the splines. Yeah, put his sauce as yeah, you put put the wire bundles in there too so that we can share those. Uh back here. That, that file should just be the wire bundles and nothing else. Okay, so this is just one wire bundles. So everyone runs the mess. I don't don't know where it is. But well, the one that one, the one that's called uh <coughs> Chinese something or other. That's a, that I haven't touched yet. It's probably okay. Because it doesn't have any tracer on it. It's just sitting there the way I created it. It's the other ones I'm concerned with. Because the other ones are... Like, the, like, the, like this one here? Yeah. Sweep long? Long. Okay. So you got uh, you got your nulls, right? And then this is your spline mask. And so you want to you want to have this be connected by the nulls, right? Yeah. So so we need the tracer. On it in not, not in this one, no. Okay. So, tracer, and we want all of. So the, these these things here, we don't want them in the sweep. The the control points for this, um, and so let's get rid of this, that just random spline there, and so now we've got. This, this, and this. We need to trace those. So no, none of that is in the sweep, correct? You just said. Oh yeah, I moved. You put it in the sweep, and yeah, I, 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 I yeah. took it. I took it out, right? Yeah. So what I've done so far is I took took out the nulls, and yeah, the connection between the nulls and the tracer is that you have to drag the nulls yeah. down there. Or anytime you get this little uh, yeah. thing, you can just click on it, and then just click to put things in there. And then the tracer, oh, yeah, don't do that. Uh, don't put the tracer in the tracer. That's not going to work. Um, we don't want trace paths. We want connect objects. Mm -hmm. So that gives you that. OK, so now the tracer is the spline. And so the tracer has to go down into the sweep. And so there's no more, the original spline that I drew that with is no longer used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not. I deleted it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The tracer becomes the, the, the path spline. Now, uh, by default, oh. it just does the cheapest spline possible. Mm -hmm. It just puts one point on each null. And we want it to be smoother than that. So you go to the tracer, and then all of these settings down here are your, are your usual spline settings. And so we'll set it to uh, Bezier, and then it's got to have some intermediate points. Yeah. So we'll go to you know, Adaptive, I guess. 
or maybe just uniform. Let's look at the polygons. Yeah, and so now, now. Are the profiles of the uh, test profiles that I created. Yeah, yeah, they're all in the spline mask, right there. Yeah, and so that's all in there now. If this were to, does this rotate? No, it's just a. Would there be a way to do that? Not that comes to mind. Um, the yeah, so now I'm able to art direct this and move it around and. And the twist. The twist is in the sweep. Under details. Oh yeah, rotate. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. Yeah. You should be able to put that uh, rotation to. From to yeah, if you crank that up, yeah, then you get that. So if you look at the one that I have, that one that I have that set up, uh, was short, a very short one. It should have. Should have the everything in there, but you're saying that I don't want the original spline anymore. Right. Yeah. This, the sweep only takes two splines. This is a spline, and this is a spline. And so, yeah, th th we're going to just delete that. And so now, tracer. Um, well, you don't want them in there. Uh, no. Yeah. So I'm going to take those out. And the tracer needs to be in connect objects. This was in trace path. So connect objects. There we go. And now now you got it. Um, yeah, because you're. Does it matter at all where the axis is for any? Because the axis will be like flying out here somewhere. But the axis for the sweep will be out here. But then my um, nulls are somewhere else. Does that matter? Um, I mean, the sweep is going to, when you grab the sweep, it moves the whole thing. So, you know, th this is part of the, having controllers like this that control something that's also an object. You know, sometimes either you just never move this thing and you just move the controllers, or, you know, yeah, if you wanted to adjust that, then you know, just move this so that it's yeah. closer to, yeah. so that, like at least has some relationship to, to what's going on. But I mean, you can move the whole thing by you know moving the sweep or just grabbing all of the controllers, and moving them. That would also move the whole thing, right? That allows you to, you, know, you could rotate the whole thing. Yeah, yeah just. Are they combing their profile throughout? Yeah, the, the controllers are just points. We made them circles. You know, just so that they, you could see them, but their yeah. their rotation is irrelevant. No, I meant the uh, end on the end sides. Yeah, I mean sides. that that needs to be. They all need to be on the correct plane that lines up with the plane that you have the spline mask set to. So. So it, I usually just make them in the you know front view. So that then this is simpler. So that now I can just do everything here. I know it's going to be on. I know it's all going to be flat, right? Because now if I go and I look over here, it's all flat because I, you know, made the first one in the front view, so it's flat to the front view. And then in the spline mask, um, yeah, we want it along the x y, which is x y. Does this change if I have this in a different view? Let's see. If I grab, if I put it up here and I make a new spline mask. No, it just always says x, y. Yeah, so the, the easiest way to do this is just when you're going to make your profile, just go to the front view and do it there, because that's going to be uh, less chance for error, because that lines up with this, if I put all these in there. Okay. So when you're using a tracer, you are not going to draw an original spline. The tracer no. becomes the spline. Yeah. 
and you can do all but like if so I have a thing um there's like a the controller of the wires, like a telephone pole kind of thing up here. And it's gonna do that. I don't do that spine. I just do I just do that with the handles later. Yeah, so I mean I mean that particular example, like it's six of one, half a dozen of the other, like you could just draw the spine. You wouldn't have a wire rig, so to speak, there, but maybe that job isn't really for a wire rig. You know, the wire rig allows you to just sort of more, you know, easily art direct it without having to redraw the spline everything. But you could do it the other way and just have a spline and just draw it, right? Um, in fact, here, let's do the one thing. I, I saw Nose Man doing this over the weekend. If I were to... Uh, if I were to do this, someone asked, I think, on the video I put up, like, could you do it with physics? So I'm not going to use a rig yet. Let's just see if we can, what's the easiest way to pin it? And so this blind, yeah, we want hanging things. Turn off that point mode. Set those. That's fixed. Set what? I put the rope tag on the spline, the pass spline, and then selected both ends and said set. And so that should. But we want a physics based one where we could easily just drag around the edges, the ends. I mean, if I move this point, the sim updates, right? So we would need to make this uh, connected. We'll get to the tracer. Let me just connect it first, right? Because that that worked fine. You were just freezing them in space. But what if we wanted to just move it? That would be more useful. So in that case, we want the simulation tag. 
connector. Um, let's see. Why would you go to the Saltium tags instead of what we're doing with the tracer? Because we, to make a droop so that we can just, you know, pull nulls to each telephone pole and then hit play and all the wires will droop. Uh, but I think I might need points. Let's see here. If we bring this up. Okay, so now that so the rope belt belts that to this sphere because it does need geometry. Using that null, I think, was the wrong way to go. And so now, if I were to rewind this and hit play, and if I were to move this sphere, yeah, that's good. So now, let's see what would be the way to do this. So you need to select this point, then run the connect. There we go. So now that's connected between those two. If I 
need to make it way less noisy. Um, in the rope tag here, stretchiness, bounciness, friction, target length, radius, mass. Is gravity in the, um the gravity is going to be in the project settings. I think there's just way more friction. I mean, this gives you two ends that you can move. But for a whole lot of drooping wires, I don't know if that's super useful. Is, this, is there a profile on this, or is it just straight up spline? I mean, the spine itself. Oh, wow, that was wild. Um, But we wanted a whole lot of them. That's all the problems that you had in the in the file, right? As far as Yeah, the flowers are pretty dense polygon wise. Like, you could probably get away with way less subdivisions on the, the flower splines themselves. But um, they just look too big. Like, if you went to the spline mask and hit T. They were too small, and then they were bigger because I couldn't even see it. Oh yeah, you got you got this extra spline in there. Let's delete that. Yeah, yeah, you had the just the same problem as the other one. So you had three things in the sweep. You, it, it doesn't work right unless you give it two things. And so now. Yeah, Isn't but but there? yeah, there's, three. there's three. So what, what's but there? Too many? you had another spline down here. Same yeah, yeah. So this one right here, even though it's off, still messes up the. 
you can only put two things in a sweep, like regardless. And so deleting that and then turning it back on restores us to and normal. The tracer is not a child of, what is, uh, it's just a peer of? It's a child of the sweep. It's, it's the pass wine. The tracer becomes the pass wine. So that's what the tracer does. The, the, all the tracer object does is it generates blinds, either by following where something moved or connecting objects. So, oh, OK. Uh, now that I think about that, what if we did it that because way? Because I know that when I was doing the wire thing for the Grievals or the hallway, I just put the nulls, the handles, after I created the, the whole spline. I created the whole cable, and then I put the handles on them, and I moved them around with the handles. I, so that's what I tried to do here. And yeah, you see, one or the other. Either you're going to use the tracer in the nulls, or you're going to draw the path. Not, not both. Like it's one thing or the other, right? Because the the tracer is producing the path. You can put the the nulls on the spline and not use the tracer. Is that what you mean? No. Like it's either one or the other. Either either use a tracer, or you just draw the path where you want the spline. The tracer generates a null, generates a spline from the nulls. That's what it's doing, because it connects them with a spline. Let's see if we can get C4D to restart here. What's going on? I'm just going to Oh, okay. That's the way to go. Right, so we want like a network, uh, we want telephone poles with drooping stuff. So, <laughs> with drooping uh, yeah. wires. So, the fastest route here is I'm going to go to top view. And go to not the sketch, but just the spline pen. Yeah. So I could, you know, I'm looking down on this, and I'm putting a point where I want the wires attached to a thing, like so. Then I'll add the um, simulation tag rope to the spline. And then I'll grab all the points, all the points, and go back here and set them all as fixed. Then, if I click out of it, we should see something. Yeah. If I just run it, yeah. nothing. But now, if we adjust the spline to uniform, 
and then run it. They all droop. The amount of drooping is going to be primarily the number of points. So if we go to spline, uniform, and dial that up, remember you got to click out of it. There they all droop. On the left. Spline, uniform, number of points. Yeah. More, more points is going to be more give. So And in addition to that, like with that many points, the stretchiness was up. Let's see. The, the tag is just a rope tag, right? Yeah. You didn't, um, in this case, you didn't have a connector. You just, you did fix. You just fixed. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just. With no object. This is just I mean, one. If I had telephone poles theoretically. Yeah. They would be the fix. It would be the connector object. Yeah, you could do that cool pro programmatically. So, for instance, here, if this is a pole, I'm going to make the anchor point. at the top of it. And then I'm going to clone it onto those points. Object, spline, and we want the distribution to be vertex. That gives us each point. And then turn off align clone. So now it makes a pull at each point I drew there. What? At the point where you chose the anchor point, was it one? Just, just, when I, just, just when I drew the spline. But actually, this should update now, right? So if I come back here to the top, have this selected, and go back to spline pen, yeah, it draws new, because it's all linked to the same spline, now I can just draw all of my poles. Oops, what happened there? Why did I lose those? That's weird. Let's go back. I come back to here. Oh, because they didn't get set to fixed. I don't know if there's a way to do that. You'd have to do that. You'd have to come back here. No, no, no. The, like the, there's no there's only one simulation tag here. It's just that oh. the points were not fixed because I drew them. They're new points. And so that, you know, the set of points here, you just have to come back to point mode, control A, set all, set, set all of them as fixed. The new ones, right? Yeah. And then click off of there. And there we go. We got. And so there. But now, this is the path, right? And so when we want to do the same thing on the first one here, again, I'll come to the front view and try to do it relatively proportionally. If I come in here to end side, let's make this a little bit smaller, and then do something like this. Control dragging. Why can that not working? Control drag. Object mode. Control drag. They're still no good out of anchor point mode, there we go. There's a bundle of wires. Here's my spline mask. Still doing this in front view, all in there, like that. And then sweep. Sweep gets this and this. 
And so now get all that. And there we go. It's too big. So spline mask T. Now you probably don't want it like simulating, so at some point um, if you wanted to freeze it, um, if you just did a current state to object, or, or well, let's see what happens. If I do a, uh, well, I don't know what's going to happen. What happens if I do a connect objects on the spline? Now, see, I got too many things in my sweep. Uh, take this one out. This one here, delete the tag. I don't want it to sim anymore. And this one is just. Which one's which here? Okay, I'm not sure what it's doing. Let's do that again. Uh, okay, so here it is. Simulating. Super. And now, we'll say current state to object. That gives us one's the new one what is this vertex color I think this is the new one you think it would name them differently uh, which one is which we'll turn this one off well we will rewind ah gosh that's kind of hard because I, I don't want to delete the tag on the one that uh, is new which I think is this one so I'm gonna delete that Rewind. All right, so this is the yeah straight one. This is the there we go. And so this is the frozen one. It's a little tricky, kind of a weird workflow. But now there we go. That's just in place now. And so it would the cloner, however, is still referencing the other spline. So you need to keep that on. Mm. Does it come over as a current state? N it doesn't, you know, when you make a current state to object, it makes a new object, right? A new thing. And so however that other object was connected is yeah. still there, which is good because if, if we pointed the cloner at the new spline, I think it would make way more telephone poles, right? One for each point. Because uh, that one is much more subdivided, um, but it doesn't really matter because even when you would render it, the spline wouldn't be there anyway. So, but is there a way to make it pre-droop? There was like a thing, like to run the sim out the. This doesn't have the nulls, right? This is all done with the simulation tag, right? With the way you set this up. There's no... Yeah, no nulls, nulls here. Nulls. Yeah, right. So, I mean, from, from scratch again here, like, it was just about making the, the path of the wires, right? So, again, on the top view here, I just came in with the, not the sketch, but the spline pen. Because the spline pen, and I'm not going to click and drag. I'm just going to click, right? I'm just like... Like just stapling it to wherever I want it in the world, right? So like here, 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 and it doubles back on itself. Like that, right? And so then the first the part is making it droop, right? So that's the uh, simulation rope. And then you gotta set all the points. So control A, set. Now they won't droop because there's no subdivisions in here. The default on the spline is that it's in adaptive mode with a five degree angle. And there's not that much bend, there's no bend really to any of these because we just made straight lines, right? And so we, because if I were to run this now, here it will not bend. That one does because I, I messed up and I click and I click and drug a little bit. Um, 
And so I need to go back and change it to uniform. And then give it, you know, the more points you give it, then the more it's going to droop. If you click off of the spline, there it goes. Okay, and then the trick with the cloner was that I'm going to use the spline points as because when you clone onto it, there's different ways of cloning objects onto it. So the the different things we did here with the cloner was one, the anchor point, right? So it's always easier to put the anchor point for whatever the clone is going to be at the position where you want it to be attached. You know, so we make this taller, kind of like this, right? And then uh, hit. C on it and move the anchor point to the top. There we go. And now cloner. Pole goes into the cloner. Cloner needs to get pointed at an object. And the object we're using here is just is the spline. Yeah. I made an extra spline there somehow. Um, and so the cloner needs to look at the spline. And there it goes. So it kinda kinda gets it. Um, the when you put it in when you point a cloner in object mode and tell it to look at a spline, these distributions are pretty key. Count means like I control the total number of telephone poles and it evenly distributes them. Step is now I control the space between telephone poles and I don't have control over the the, the total number of telephone poles, right? So both both those like this would be good for like um, tank treads, right? Where then you could make sure that regardless of how long the tread is, it uh, lines up correctly. But what we want is vertex meaning just put one at each vertex. Now, th because of the way I drew the spline, I guess, this time, they're facing the right direction, but the other thing I had to do here was turn off a line clone so that, uh, so that it doesn't try to rotate the, um, the object to whatever direction the point that vertex is facing. The, the spline points, like they, they, they have, um, there is some sort of facing, that, you know, because you can twist it. So yeah, it, it, if you select that point, I mean, if, it, if this was not an aligned, yeah, if I turn it off, like it is, there is a direction. When you select it, I guess it does not show it to you by default. Regardless, if you want to make sure that it does not rotate, you just move it to where it is and you turn off a line cloning. So it's there. But the cool thing now is now I've got a system, now that I've got this set up, I can just draw my telephone poles by selecting the spline, going back to top view, going back to the pen, and if you have this unchecked, create new splines, it just simply adds more into this object. And so then all the connections that this object have automatically gets updated. So I can just come in here and um, draw more telephone poles. And the only thing we have to do is we do have to update the fixed points. So you got to go back to the tag, control, make sure you're in point mode, control A, and say set them all as fixed so that they don't fall. I think that's our uniform distribution. Let's see here. And 
this has a profile of a wire? It's not, I'm not, it's not straight up splines. Yeah, we didn't we didn't put it in a sweep yet with anything. It's just it's just splines right now. But yeah, oh, okay. you could do yeah. you could do whatever you want on it. Right. I mean, you could use it to to make a sweep. Um, the other possible thing here is like, let's say you wanted um, you know the wires have those like uh, big spheres on them, you know, to keep them from hitting each other, because. That would be bad, I guess. Um, you could clone those onto the spline. So if you made a new sphere, that looks about right, maybe, maybe there. And then you made another cloner. And I put the sphere on the cloner. This is the, I don't know, we'll call them protection balls. And um, this gets pointed at the same spline in object mode. And then yeah, that goes, they go on. And, you know, this would be one, like, maybe, you know, like, step. Yeah. So that now you can control, uh, you know, they happen every 500 uh, units, or maybe way more, every 3,000 units. And so now, and they should s stick, I think. Now they slide because the length is changing. So maybe a different mode here. Step per segment. Let's uncheck that and see if that's the deal. And I slide more. Let's say count. That sticks. Yeah, so there you, you would need to put it in that mode and control the control the number of That, that's that one where I messed up where I was drawing it. I didn't, I uh, curved a little bit while I was drawing it. Right, so I mean, that's obviously too long of a wire run <laughs> given our parameters. I don't know if you could put a collider on this one. one doesn't go, the ball goes through the floor because it's not in the simulation, it's just kind of like attached to the spline. But Just an infinite light, so it looks like it's outside. Oh, sorry. Oh. An infinite light, so infinite it looks light. yeah, so it looks like it's outside. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy how responsive this stuff is now. But you don't have any tag on the sphere. No, no, I'm just I'm bouncing the splines. Yeah. And so the, the spheres just are stuck to the splines. What tags? 
you don't have a tag on the spline either. It's just it's a rope tag. Is it a rope tag? Yeah, the rope tag is on it the is. spline. It yeah. Is. Yeah. And then the col the collider tag is on the plane. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so for those kind of wires, that, that, that seems like the best. I mean, this could also be like instead of, um, you know, telephone poles, you know, these could be more like just, yeah, you know, like, like, like boxes maybe on the ceiling of, of something, mm -hmm. right, if you just... Uh, Yeah, something like that. And since it's simulating, I think you could, you know, like you were doing with the box. What if we uh, rotated everything? Why did this spline not come along? Oh, because we fixed those points, I think. Clear all that. Why is that fighting this? I'm going to delete the tag. Check mode, I am. Oh, I'm in anchor point mode. Jeez. Uh, yeah, I think that's what it is. Alright, so now if I grab everything and go over this way. And uh Make sure that these are set. Yeah, they drop that way now. Because the tag is referencing what to change the. What is it referencing that changed the truth? It's just gravity goes down, so like we rotated every we rotated everything, but we didn't rotate gravity. Gravity still goes, you know, negative y by default. So yeah, so any kind of like nodal bunch of stuff.
tracer was my phone, yep. Tracer was his phone. Alright, one one other idea that comes to mind is Now, what if we have the telephone poles? Yeah, you'd have to think about this a little bit differently, but I think combining both techniques would work. If you did this, this is a telephone pole. I'm going to put the anchor point on the telephone pole at the bottom. And then use the cloner to clone telephone poles onto the landscape. It does that. Align clone. Now they just stick straight up. That's better. Now, how would we connect them? So by default, we're in uh, surface mode, which means we have control over how many telephone poles there are. So how would we connect them? If we're going to, because this is a random distribution here across the surface of this. We would have to do something similar to what we were talking about before with the tracer. We can connect them. If you tell the tracer to look at a cloner, it will connect all of them, but is doing it from the anchor point. So we need to connect objects that are at the top of the poles. And so this is the pole cloner. I'm going to make a second cloner and put it in object mode. And it is just going to clone nulls, just blank nulls. And this cloner is going to point at the pole cloner. So that sort of puts it, it's cloning just blank nulls at each spot, object, pole. Not vertex, we want axis. I think that's doing it. And now if we tell the tracer to look at this one. In the cloner under transform, I think we should be able to offset the system. It's weird. Uh, cloner object. Oh, I said the volume. That's the problem. Axis. There we go. And so cloner transform. Dial that up to the top of the pole. Now they're all connected. So 
I think we can simulate the tracer. The two colors are acting on completely different things. Like they don't have to. Yeah. Okay. One this, this one is cloning nulls that we nulls. just. The other one's cloning the bottom. Yeah, but the, 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 this one here is. They're both in object mode. One is pointed at the other. So this one is pointing at this one. And then this one is randomly distributing the poles on the surface of this one. Okay. So this one is just kind of like a duplicator trick. Like it's just allowing us to create another clone at, uh, create one null for each pole. And then the trick was that we, we did that so that we could essentially create a second anchor point. Because by default, it's just going to clone, the tracer is just going to trace the anchor point. And we put the anchor point at the bottom so that it sat on the landscape. And so now this one is uh, just pointed at that and then offset up. But if we were to put a rope tag on there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that because it's not an editable spline. Let's see what happens. And it just falls. Um. Yeah, there might be like some node thing we might be able to do here. The short answer would be to hit C on the tracer and then grab all the points. There might be another way. I'll think about it over the weekend. But um, now you can select all the points and set them. And And nothing happens because we didn't create any intermediate points. There it goes. Right, so this is the same, you know, conceptually, the same idea as using the nulls to make a wire rig. But instead of hand placing all the nulls ourselves, we're using a cloner to make, you know, if you had to hand place all of the telephone poles in like a city, like obviously doing it this way is going to be much faster, right, to procedurally generate. Cool. All right. Well, we came up with two good techniques there for, for doing the drooping wires. I think that's... At what point did you connect like, to the, very fir the first car with the we created the poles on the landscape. Can't you, at that point, turn it into an object, connect object? Because you're not, there's nothing moving here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, now at this point, yeah, when, once you would have generated what you want, then, yeah, you just, you know, you know hit C on all this stuff. And, I just yeah. thought, because then when you have a second corner, it won't make the mistake of looking for that other point. It, it's not going to look for that other point. It won't look for the anchor point because there's no more anchor point. It's already in a connected object. Yeah, well, because I the thing you would want to hit C on first is the tracer, because that will just sort of freeze the spline at that point, right? So then the second cloner essentially just isn't isn't in isn't in the loop anymore. You've just you know hit C on it essentially. So. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the same concept for all of this stuff, right? You know, procedural stuff to get everything in place, but then when you want to, like, fine-tune the art direction, 
you have to step out of that in order to well, make that work. What I'm trying to think of is, I mean, speaking of the tracer, do you, that's the spline. So are you now going to lose what you created in the spline mask? No, the spline mask is just doing the profile. So, no. Making the profile. The, the tracer is the path, not the profile. Yeah. So you, you could still do whatever you wanted procedurally for the for the profile on this. I'm just trying to understand where my individual tables are. If there's a tracer, if I hit C on a tracer, can I still control the individual tables? Because the tracer is the control. Um, it's just a spline now. Oh. It's just called tracer. So. Yeah, okay. you can come in here and just grab a spline and move it. And then it still sims. Huh. Yeah. Right, so also if you need a web of junk, <laughs> this would also work to create such a thing. Or maybe a really <coughs> wild chandelier of some kind, right? You could yeah. real quickly do a platonic, one of these things, one of these things, I don't know, whatever. And uh, that's way smaller. And you can make a bigger one, like a pattern. And then uh, put them in a cloner. And put the cloner onto this object, the tracer in, which one was sticking? It was, I think it was count. Yeah. Cool.